My name is Lane Gibbons. I'm the uh, lead fire effects monitor for Interior Region 1 of the National Park Service. And we're here in Big Meadows. And we're going to be talking about how we manage the meadow and some of the results of a recent prescribed fire that we had this spring. Big Meadows is uh, about 125 acres in size. It is the largest non-forested area of the park. And although it makes up about one-tenth of one percent of the park's area, it contains about 18 percent of the park's rare plants, uh, two state rare animals, and uh, globally rare wetland uh, known as a mafic wetland. Mafic wetlands uh, have soils that are rich in elements such as magnesium and iron. And with that uh, comes specific uh, plants, species of plants and plant communities that thrive in those conditions. We don't know exactly how or when the meadow formed, but we know that uh, native people were using the meadow uh, 9,000 BCE. And they were using the site for its resources, uh, game, uh, plant foods and nuts, uh, things that were available to them seasonally. Um, Settlers came much later. Uh, by the 1850s, a family living in the Shenandoah Valley owned a large portion of the meadow and they used it for cattle. Uh, they used it as a cattle range. Um, <clears throat> they had tenant farmers uh, living up here, looking over the cattle and um, cutting timber for uh, their own personal use. Uh, in the 20th century, the meadow was the site of a civilian conservation corps camp. Uh, it was the site of the park's dedication ceremony in 1936. And uh, since then, it's been a focal point for visitors uh, coming to the park. We know from historical accounts that fire has previously been used to manage the meadow. And today, pre prescribed fire allows us to manage the meadow in a low impact and safe way. Um, it allows us to avoid putting heavy equipment in the central portion of the meadow, which has uh, sensitive resources and soils. And uh, it allows us to progressively uh, remove woody vegetation and brush over time. The overall goal of managing big meadows is to maintain its ecological integrity as a, an open herbaceous dominated plant community that provides habitat, uh, and also to preserve its cultural significance as an open landscape. Our strategy for managing the meadow involves uh, separating the meadow into three segments. And every year, a segment of the meadow receives a different treatment. Uh, one segment is mowed, one segment is burned, and one segment is left fallow. Leaving a section of the meadow fallow means that we leave it alone. We don't mow and we don't use prescribed fire in that section for that year. This. Uh, allows us to keep from disturbing the entire meadow in any given year. It allows us to uh, maintain some sort of variation in the structure of vegetation, uh, which provides better habitat for the animals that live here. This also prevents us from having a negative impact on an entire plant or animal population in any given year. Prescribed fire is something that helps us remove thatch and litter from the meadow floor. Uh, this is something that mowing can't do. And exposing that new mineral soil allows plants to regrow and new plants to germinate. Because of our management, uh, Big Meadows remains dominated by a diverse group of herbaceous plants. Uh, without that management, the meadow would eventually fill in with uh, woody shrubs and small trees like this hawthorn and forest would grow in from the edge of the meadow. Not only is it important uh, to manage the meadow as an open space for ecological reasons, uh, but it is also important to open the meadow as an open space uh, so that we can interpret its cultural history. As we discussed, there are many positive aspects of using prescribed fire to manage the meadow, but uh, spring prescribed fire alone is not enough to set back woody vegetation in the meadow, which is why we still use mowing as a tool for management. Uh, we've discovered that over, uh, tw with 20 plus years of monitoring and observation, that 
a combination of both prescribed fire and mowing is best for maintaining the meadow. Here we can see that fire doesn't burn uniformly throughout the meadow. Here's some charred and burnt material and right next to it is unburned material. Uh, reasons for this might be slight changes in wind direction. Uh, other reasons may be slight changes in the moisture of the fuel at the time of the burn. Uh, another thing is that fire doesn't kill everything it burns. Uh, for example, a couple weeks ago, this fly poison uh, was much growing much closer to the ground. And although fire has uh, scorched the very tips of its leaves, um, it will continue to grow and flower into the season. Uh, fly poison is one of the most easily recognizable wildflowers in big meadows. Some plants in the meadow respond positively to prescribed fire. This brown bog sedge, for example, has increased in numbers since using it. Uh, likewise, this bristly blackberry hasn't been seen in the meadow for several years, and its numbers have increased since using prescribed fire. The heart of the range of these species is in the Northeast in the Great Lakes, uh, but they're rare here in the meadow and in the state of Virginia because they're at the very southern extent of that range. Gray birch is another rare species here in the park and in the state of Virginia. It is at the very southern extent of its range, uh, but because it doesn't occur as in high in numbers as the plants we previously talked about, like the bristly blackberry and the brown bog sedge, uh, we want to actually protect this plant from fire. Uh, ways that we can do that are using uh, techniques to use fire to our advantage. We can light around the base of the tree so that the fire behavior starts at low intensities and we can place that fire in a way so that it backs away from the trees and into the wind, uh, keeping fire intensity low and preventing the tree from getting damaged. Uh, this could be the roosting location of a woodcock or some other bird that uses the meadow. Other birds include the field sparrow, the grasshopper sparrow, and the indigo bunting. Fire and management help produces variation in the structure of vegetation. It also helps uh, produce variation and diversity in the type of plants that are out here. All of these things produce a habitat that provides space for the birds to use as roosting sites, nesting sites, uh, perching sites, and places for foraging too. Uh, diversity in structure and uh, plant species also brings a diversity of insects, which these birds use for foraging. Small mammals such as meadow voles and short-tailed shrews also benefit from the diversity of insects that results from management and prescribed fire. Uh, small mammals like these often escape prescribed fire by burrowing underground. Soil is an excellent in insulator of heat and uh, even just a few centimeters below the surface of the soil, uh, these small mammals are protected from the heat of the fire. National Park Service uh, resource managers and fire managers use a process called adaptive management to maintain the meadow. Uh, this is a process that involves gathering information, uh, developing best practices for treatments, implementing those treatments, uh, monitoring the results and collecting information about the results of those treatments, uh, comparing that with the best available science and research at the time, and then using all of that again to inform best practices and treatments. Again, it's a cyclical process. This process of adaptive management allows us to constantly reevaluate our progress towards these goals to make sure that we remain in line and on target.